Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode one of Germacraft, the series where I play Minecraft. Ah! I feel like the Halo 3 mod tools and I have a very deep understanding of one another. Better late than never. And this video in particular is especially late, because I developed this mod around six months ago, but was unable to release it due to unforeseen consequences. But before I get into all the hows and whys, allow me to first show off a little bit. is what happens when you try to download illegal cat pictures over the internet without a VPN. Big mistake, minus two go directly to cat jail. But you, you viewer, are a smart human thing, and you would definitely have used today's sponsor, NordVPN, to hide your IP and become completely invisible on the internet. And if you sign up right now with the link in the description, you can get a two-year plan at an amazing discount. And it even comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Boyo, that is a big plus two. And you know what? In addition to hiding your IP address and protecting you online, NordVPN can also be used to instant transmission between thousands of servers in over 50 countries. And so next time you think about downloading highly illegal videos of fluffy cats being cute, be sure to protect yourself with NordVPN. So sign up today at nordvpn.com slash inferno plus. Add over. I'm sure all you guys have seen plenty of Minecraft mods before, and hell, I've even done a few of them on this channel before. They just generally aren't that difficult to do. But this, this is something very different. A completely destructible Havoc physics simulation of a Minecraft map in a game engine that predates Minecraft by about five years. Starting out on this project was pretty rough. The workflow from 3ds Max to Halo 3 was not straightforward at all, and I spent a fair amount of time setting up automation to smooth that out. I also ended up writing a lot of really awful Mac script, which I do not want to talk about because it is an accursed language that indexes arrays from one, and it should be burned from this world for its sins. Once I had a reasonable workflow established though, that's where the real fun began. I had to figure out how much stuff I could cram into a map before it would explode. So I generated some simple flat areas of grass blocks and used that to find some fairly accurate limits of what was possible. 1200 simple physics shapes, 300 game objects, 200 transparency layers. Anything more than that would risk the game crashing. And honestly, that is just not a huge budget to work with. A single chunk in Minecraft is 65,000 blocks. So I had to get creative. To start, I ended up grouping blocks into chunks of 16. If I were to simply make every block its own object, I would immediately exceed the object limit. So I instead create chunks of blocks using damage regions so that I can use the full budget of 1200 physics shapes more efficiently, turning 1200 blocks into only around 100 objects. The next optimization I had to make was in the design of the maps I actually wanted to create. Having large open areas was not an option since the block limit was so low, so I settled on creating smaller maps designed for between 2 and 4 players. And instead of making the entire map fully destructible, I designed the map so that the core play area was destructible while the boundaries and foundations were completely solid. So on the village map, the wood and grass blocks are all breakable, but the stone underneath is not. And on the spleef map, the glass shatters, but the stone structure surrounding it does not. And while it is a little disappointing that you can't just dig straight down and become a mole person on every map, the upside of this is that I can actually design the play area around the destruction physics, so that every match doesn't end with every player at the bottom of a giant pit. And speaking of the design process, it was very tedious, and it took up a vast majority of the development time on this project. As I said before, I had to group blocks into chunks to make this project work, and while that sounds great on paper, it's very time-consuming to do in practice. Here are all of the chunks from the lockout map. 
around 80 unique pieces. It's kind of like a giant Lego set. A Lego set from hell. So just for a moment, try to imagine assembling this map from these pieces, and retain all of your sanity in the process. Luckily though, I was able to create automation to handle large amounts of this work, but there are some things out there that just have to be done by hand, and boy, did I do them. Once all the maps were roughly assembled though, it was time for detail work. And I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist with this stuff, and it always costs me so much time. A great example of this is with the lighting in this mod. A smart man would have just left the maps full bright with shadows off because there's just no reasonable way to light this kind of scene. Halo primarily uses static light mapping, which doesn't really play well with destructible environments. But I was stubborn and invested a ton of time and effort into creating a decent lighting solution for this mod. The way this works is the maps are lit with a mostly flat ambient light and minimal shadows within the play area, while outside of the play area, shadows are generated normally. I then disable dynamic shadows on all of the blocks in the map, as having an individual shadow for each block causes heavy overlapping and creates inconsistent and dense shadows that look really bad. I then have to model a shell of the major structures on the map and overlay that onto the play area. This shell will act as a faux shadow caster for the map. In order for this to work though, I had to compile a custom shader for the mod that discards pixels of a specific color during alpha testing, but still applies those pixels during the shadow mapper's depth pass. And this solution works for everything, except water. Water, for some reason, does not accept dynamic shadows, so I ended up pulling out the oldest trick in the book. I ran a simulation of the lighting in 3ds Max and rendered the shadows to a transparent texture, and then just stuck that texture on a flat plane slightly below the water. And there you have it, an overly complicated solution to a trivial problem. But the fun does not end here. Another important detail of this project was trying to make the destruction as satisfying as possible. So instead of just having the blocks disappear when you smack them, I created debris for every single block, so that when you blow up a wall with a rocket launcher, it shatters into a zillion tiny pieces that all go flying in different directions, ricocheting and bouncing off everything in the area, which is very satisfying to watch in motion. There are also a lot more subtle things as well, like the grass being shredded by gunfire, books popping out of bookcases, and falling leaves shaken out of the tree when you blow it up with a grenade. All these little things add up and help to create a more authentic and full experience. For example, these doors are actually working doors that you can open and close, but you can also just beat them to a pulp if you want. It's an unnecessary detail, but it does add little gameplay interactions that would otherwise not exist, like opening this door to snipe someone and then closing it shut when they shoot back. And also another fun little element that I particularly like is the mystery chest. Every 60 seconds, a player can open this chest and a random gun or power-up will pop out. Instead of having a fixed power weapon on the map, it's a constantly changing spawn that creates extra chaos in an already chaotic mod. There's plenty more nonsense that I could just infinitely ramble on about here, but I think I've bored you guys enough. So let's move on to the big oof of this video. The absolute catastrophe that I teased at the very start. This mod was finished about six months ago, but I could not release it because it would crash in MCC. I spent three months working on this project at the beginning of the year, not knowing that it was completely broken. And I know that sounds impossible, I had to have been testing it, right? How could I not know that it was broken? Well, it's because the Halo 3 mod tools has a debug mode that allows you to test your mods without having to compile and launch MCC. And since it can take five or 10 minutes to compile a mod, we only ever tested on MCC when we were doing multiplayer. And of course, this crash did not happen in debug mode. It only happened playing the mod on MCC. And so when the mod would randomly crash during a multiplayer test, I would attempt to recreate those crashes in debug with no luck. And for a while, I thought it was just random. You know, games sometimes crash, it happens, right? Well, apparently not, because eventually I figured out what was going wrong and realized how serious it was. And after a ton of testing, I found out how to replicate the crash consistently. And honestly, at that point, I just didn't really know what to do. So I documented the issue and reported it to the developers at 343, and then Elden Ring came out, and I started working on other projects, and I just sort of forgot about it for a while. And then one day, MCC got an update, and the bug was fixed. The devs actually bothered to patch a bug that only affects modders. I can hardly even express how much I appreciate that. This mod may not have ever been released if it weren't for some rad dude over at 343 who took time out of their day to patch a bug for some annoying ass YouTuber who makes bad videos. Thank you so much. So now that we're done talking about development stuff, it's time to find out how it actually plays. 
And to be honest, I think this might be one of the most fun little mods that I've ever put together. This obviously isn't the most expansive or complicated project I've ever done, but sometimes a simple idea that's implemented in a very effective way can make for a really good experience. And the development of this mod from concept to reality was actually really seamless. I knew how I wanted this to work in my head, and it turned out pretty much exactly as I envisioned. Sure, it was an absolute pain to build, but even if the systems behind this mod are complicated, it doesn't mean that the experience for the player is. It's simple, it's fun, and it just works. There's a there's a hammer in the center of the map right now. It'd be a shame if someone were to grab that and then kill you with it and then fall <laughs> in the water. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Maybe a grenade. Uh, uh no 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I got stuck. Oh no, now you're stuck. <laughs> now it's your turn. You're stuck now. <laughs> Did I get you with one shot from the BR? That was perfect. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I said the sniper respawn just falls into the water immediately. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, no. Down we go. <laughs> no! Uh, I was gonna get the fuck up on He almost got the rocket. <laughs> and he almost got the rocket too. Ah! <laughs> Someone outside? Not anymore! <laughs> that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Holy fuck! And that's how you get him. I had overshoot. Hold on. What if... Take Mongoose up here. Put in door. Then close door. Ooh! On, let's go in. Okay, one clock. Yes, yes, there you right. go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have a poop splattered you. Did it work? <laughs> I don't think it worked. <laughs> Okie dokie then, I think that just about wraps things up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you want more content, then check out the second channel where I post bad videos. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Green Knight, General 101, and the developers at 343 for helping make this project a reality. And of course I want to thank Nordgaren, who pretty much single-handedly built the entire Woodland Mansion map on his own. Like, really, I, I didn't have to do shit, he just kind of made it himself, so uh, all credit to him for that one. I'd also like to thank my patrons, and uh, I always try to include a fun patron easter egg in all these projects, and this one is kind of unique. There are a couple of signs spread out through the maps that have patron names on them, and they're randomly selected each time you load the map. So, it's an important rule you have to follow. If your name is on a house, it is your house, and no one else is allowed to grief it. That is a rule, and if you don't follow that, I will ban you because I am the admin of this Minecraft server. Alrighty, so one last thing. Since you are a particularly cool dude and you waited to the very end of the video without clicking off to watch, um, Can You Beat Elden Ring Without a Girlfriend? Here's some teasers of the other projects I am currently working on. Ooh, would you look at that? What could that possibly be? It's so mysterious. Hmm. Wow, is that Skyrim? I love Skyrim. That is my favorite Skyrim game. Wow, we isn't that exciting? I bet you just can't wait for me to release my next video six to eight months from now. B bye.